Hello everyone and welcome back. It is me. It is the Cyber Warrior. This is Cyber Warrior Studios and I know you're all here for Tech Tuesday. That's right. We're getting back at it. I'm sorry I've been off for a few weeks um, with these tech videos, but I'm trying to keep them going. All right. Um, I apologize. So before we get started, look, make sure you like, comment, subscribe down below um, and also check out the description for all the ways you can support this channel and all the videos that I do for you. The more you support, the more I can do and it makes it a lot better for everybody. So anyways, all that's going to be down below in the description. Otherwise, today is all about Chapter 15, Linux Basics for Hackers, and it's all about the kernel. So before we get started, let's talk a little bit about the kernel and what it means. So the kernel, in essence, is the central nervous system of your operating system. It controls everything. It is the lowest level that you can get in terms of controlling your operating system and doing all this different stuff. Now, one thing that you may not know is Linux in and of itself is the kernel. The different distributions are the uh, uh, different operating systems. All right. So um, Linux is a monolithic kernel that enables the addition of kernel modules. Occasionally, it needs updated, whether it's new device drivers, file system drivers, system extensions, all that fun stuff. Also, on top of that, the beauty of Linux and the Linux kernel is that you can add some modules without a reboot. These are called loadable kernel modules. So. These have access to the lowest level of the kernel by necessity, making them incredibly vulnerable targets for hackers or attackers. I don't like the term hackers, but whatever, um, by, by malicious people. All right. And this is where rootkits lie. So whenever you get a rootkit or your kernel is infected with malware of any kind, it makes it very, very difficult to get rid of and very, very difficult to find because a lot of your anti-malware solutions, EDRs, XDRs, whatever you want to call it, don't necessarily know how to check the kernel because it can bypass everything that an antivirus is looking for. All right. So keep that in mind as you go about looking for malware and looking for possibilities and issues and things of that nature. If you start seeing issues with your system, especially Linux and Windows and Mac, well, all of them, I just named all of them, um, Unix, all of those. Um, a lot of times it could be because of a kernel um malware so rootkits so just keep that in mind they're they're not as prevalent that i've seen um a lot of malware sits in memory these days but the ones that are in uh the kernel are very vicious and very difficult to find and very difficult to get rid of so saying that let's go ahead and let's get into it now once again we are logged into our Kali instance as root okay and we're gonna go through a few different commands to check your kernel and show you how to look at different kernel modules and things of that nature. So the first thing is to check which kernel you have. Now the easiest command for that is gonna be uname-a and that's gonna give us our full um, kernel. So we have, and actually, correction is GNU. GNU is the kernel, all right, don't let, whatever. I may be mixing them up. I know it's GNU Linux, so. Don't roast me in the comments. I know. Anyways, so you can do uname-a. Uh, that'll give you Linux Kali 5.18.0, Kali 5, AMD 64, um, and it's running Debian um, as well. So all that information is there. The other way you can look is you can do cat proc version. This will give you basically the same information, uh, a little bit more detailed, a little bit more descript, but it's there. Now, what if we want to do some kernel tuning, all right? So one of the ways we can do that is with sysctl, so system control. So if you do sysctl-a and go less, this will show you all of the different things you can modify within your kernel. Now, uh, understand, any changes you make here using sysctl is just temporary. Upon reboot, it'll automatically go back and fall back to the sysctl.conf file, which we'll get into looking at here in a minute. Now, the thing about this is hackers can actually use this for packet forwarding. So they can be basically be a man in the middle. So one of the ways they would do that is sysctl-a grep ipv4 and go less. And this will show you all of your ipv4 commands that are there. Now, one of the ones we're looking for is, let's see if where it's at, out there. What are we looking for? Net.ipv4, 
dot ip4 so let's go down a little bit down a little bit more net dot ipv4 dot where are you at ip forward there it is so let me move this up a little bit so you can see it people there we go so this right here is if this changes to a one it automatically sets up ip forwarding and we can actually do that. So if we do quit clear sysctl w net dot ipv4 dot ip forward oops, forward equals one. That changes and enables IP forwarding. Now if we were to reboot this, actually let's go back and do grab ipv4 dot ip and that gives us ip4 and we can see it changed right there all right so we see our command worked and it changed but if i reboot this it's going to be gone all right that'll go back to zero so how do we want how would we modify this in the case of if we wanted to make it permanent well we would do vi etsy sys ctl dot conf and then in here we have our net.ipv4. Let me make sure you can see this. Let me go up a little bit. There we go. So right here, you can see net.ipv4.ip underscore forward equals one. If we wanted to enable packet forwarding on a permanent basis, we would remove this comment. So if I go here, insert, and do that that would permanently enable IP forwarding. And then every time we reboot our computer, we would either have to disable it or go back in here and comment this back out. So we'll comment it out because I do not want to enable that. And then we'll quit. Yeah, I know. Q. All right, so that would be how you modify um, the kernel during runtime and enable certain features. And you can go through and look at all the different parts of the kernel and all the different things you can enable. Um, and again, a lot of it's gonna be binary, zero or one, zero for off, one for on. Now, what if we wanna look at kernel modules? Again, these are loadable kernel modules and things that you can modify as the system is running, sometimes without a reboot. So for this, one of the older ways that this was done is the INS mod suite. Um, and if you would be able to look at it with something like LSMod. LSMod shows you all of your kernel modules that are there. So we can see crypto, uh, SCSI modules. Uh, what else we got here? We got a ton of stuff. Um, SunRPC, VSOC, and all these modules are there, all right? Now, if we wanted to, um, the, the problem with LSMod, is it doesn't take into account module dependencies while well, the INS mod suite. So if you're adding and removing kernel modules with the INS mod suite, there's a lot of times you could actually make your system unstable or unusable. And we're not gonna get into the commands to add or remove modules with that suite just because of that reason. It is outdated and is no longer used, um, especially in your new, newer Linux distributions. So, um, the other suite that came out is mod probe and you can do something like mod info Bluetooth, which I don't have my Bluetooth plugged in. So I don't know if it's going to show anything. Hey, there we go. So we do have the Bluetooth kernel there or Bluetooth kernel module. All right. And it's that dot KO file. So it shows everything there about the Bluetooth kernel module. The other thing is, um, uh, adding or removing modules with mod probe. Now these I'm not going to do, I will show you what the commands are, but I will not do it. So mod probe is how you would add or remove and do um, other things to the kernel. All right. For modules. So if you wanted to add a kernel module, it'd be mod probe dash a, and we would say something like cyber warrior studios, new video. And then we would hit enter and it would try to add that kernel module. If I had that module available to add. And then if you wanted to see if there were any errors upon trying to add it, you would do D message 
and then you would grep for video. And at this point, anything that had an alert for video could indicate a problem. So you would wanna look for those. And then finally, say we wanted to remove the kernel module um, that we just you know looked at. You would do mod probe dash r cyber warrior studios new video. And that would remove the kernel module that we just added, the loadable kernel module. Now, something about this that you need to understand is with mod probe, it does take into account dependencies. So if there are dependencies or, or if there are other modules that depend on that kernel module, then it'll kick back an error or to let you know. All right. So there will be errors and things of that involved. Um, and it helps maintain the stability of your system. But that was all of chapter 15. I know it was quick and I'm happy that it was quick because hopefully you followed along and you're able to keep up with everything. Now saying that, please, once again, like, comment, subscribe down below. And on top of that, check out the description for our link, cyborgerstudios.com and all the ways you can support us, follow us on social media and everything else. Until the next one though, when we do chapter 16 of this book, I will see you all next time.